What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Son man and son man. Gentle people. All right, so I'm just doing a quick video. I know I haven't uh, done one recently. Been very, very busy, man, with the um, not only with the repair, but the sound and lighting stuff as well. So, you know, go already. If a man don't work, he don't eat. So I got to stay on the grind. But um, just a different video. I mean, not necessarily different as far as what I'm doing, but just a different app. I know I don't, I don't remember ever doing a video about an M50. Uh, but I just finished repairing this board um, from a sound company, I think in Minneapolis or something like that. But uh, they shipped it in, so we just finished the repair on it. Um, as you could probably see, let me try to get something to point it out. But over here, it had taken out two fuses, right? So that's for channel one and channel two. Channel one, channel two. These are the fuses that control or provide the power to that circuitry. So those were knocked out. So I knew that, you know, basically you have some damage on the board. Those fuses don't blow unless something they, something is shorted out, like one of the semiconductor components or whatever. So, uh, anyway, went in there, did my troubleshooting, found out what was wrong, repaired it. I ain't going to show you exactly what I changed because I ain't trying to get nobody no inside information. You already know that go already. So, uh, but yeah, the board is repaired. Okay, so you can see the board here. It's all done. I didn't put the fuses back in yet, but uh, once again, it's an M50, uh, M50Q. So, this is the chassis right here. So I know you guys are more familiar with seeing it this way because that's all you ever see. But um, this is the chassis, right? This is how the chassis looks. Those are for the four channels, those four ribbon cables. And then this is what the board looks like. So as you can see, it's only one board. It's just one, one board in the M50Q, nothing else. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's not like the K series where you have two boards, a power supply and an amplifier board. Uh, the M series, they have like one board only. Now this is what I want to kind of point out. Um, I just finished the repair on this board, changed all the parts and everything. And do you see how the bottom of the board looks? You can't even tell I worked on this. You know what I mean? But um, this is something that I never pointed out. But you know how some people like you might run across a mechanic, man, and that cat is like real anal about, you know, about the work he does. You know, you want him to work on your car because this cat, he'll work on it, clean the car. You know, when he's done, he wipes it down. You know, lubricates whatever needs to be. That's the kind of person I am. I'm real picky about my repairs. So if I do something, I try to do it all the way. And I got a, you know, a background in electrical engineering. So I know what kind of um, solvents and, um, you know, things to use on the boards to make the boards uh, better protected and, you know, last for a long time. So when I'm done with a repair, even though you may not see it, this is how your board looks when it goes back into your unit. So you see how glossy and shiny it is? And that's because there's special chemicals. Um, that I use on the board to protect them and make sure everything is right and when I remove a part and put it back in It's done exactly the way it was when it was you know off the line of the factory or whatever So just keep that in mind man when I work on your stuff That's why some people say well, I'm just send my thing to us, you know, car at least we know so the thing when come back, right? Translation in English Yo, that's why I'll send my thing to Wasi man because at least when I get it back I know it'll be right for the people that are non-caribbean. But yeah, so that's that's kind of what I want to kind of point out I don't think I ever pointed that out, but yeah, when you send your stuff to me, um, it's done 110% right. I make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. I like to do my work that way because I don't like to see nothing come back. So once I fix it one time, I don't expect to see it back unless somebody does something crazy and they, they blow it up or whatever. So this is a board from an M50. Uh, like I said, I'm just doing a quick video because I know I haven't done one in a little while. So I uh, just wanted to show some different things as far as how I do the board on the actual bottom side of it. Uh, before it goes back to you, all right? So that's the M50 chassis right there. And uh, this is a CVR, but um, it's that other version with a dolphin on it. So I did this one first, man. I already worked on this one. So I already troubleshot it. The power supply is, is, is gone. They hit the power supply. So I'm rebuilding the power supply. You know, obviously you can see the space right here is where the power supply was. So I'm rebuilding the power supply. I can show you what the power supply looks like. Um, this is one, of, I have two of them here because I'm rebuilding two. I just got, I say, you know what? I got another one here that's also blown. I'm just going to rebuild the two of them same time. Uh, the reason they're sitting here is because some of the parts that I need, I don't have them. And I hate that, man. I like to keep a bunch of parts, man. I order like four or $5,000 worth of parts at a time. Just so when I'm working, I don't have to stop because I hate stopping. Now I just sit on there and I can't do nothing. So the parts are on the way. They should be here hopefully by, um, Thursday or Friday. So. 
once I get those parts, I knock out these two power supplies. So these are, once again, these are power supplies that go into CVR. This one came out of that Dolphin version CVR, and this one is out of a CVR, right? Let me turn it around. As you can see, they're identical. So just because the face of the amp looks a little different, it doesn't mean that the amp is different. It's the same exact amplifier. You understand? So they just they just basically change the face. Let me show you right here. It's got a different face on it, but it's the same exact CVR. All right, so just keep that in mind as well. And once again, oh, another thing I want to point out, man. Some of you guys are using a sound on rain starts to fall and you guys don't move the freaking sound or cover up the amp racks or nothing man the thing is getting full of water all of these boards right here are power supplies out of a k20 all of them and they were all wet they got the whole amplifier got wet and blew up so let me just show you what i'm talking about you don't have to be in electronics to see all of that burn you see all that black stuff that's charring when something gets burned up or catches on fire so that's what happened to these boards i'm gonna flip it over you see all of that right there? That's from water. Let me go closer. That's from water getting inside of the amp while the amp is running. You, you see what I'm saying? So these boards right here, I can't even do nothing with them. They're dead. You just got to dash them away. Or maybe take a couple parts off of them or something like that. But aside from that, I can't do nothing else. So um, yeah, just keep in mind, man. Water and uh, electronics don't mix. So if you see clouds looming and you're outside in a field doing a big party or a dance or whatever, uh, make sure you have a contingency plan, which is to have either a tarp or as they say in the island, tapalin, to throw over the amp racks, you know, turn them off or whatever you need to do to protect them. Because when the amp, when the uh, fans are running on the amp, they're sucking in air. So as they're pulling in that air, if there's water or moisture in the air, it gets pulled into the amp. So once that happened and the amp is, you know, on, you're going to get some fireworks and then your amps are no good. So once um, you have an amplifier or any kind of electronic device that's water damaged, like your phone, if you notice, if you take your phone back to the, the dealer, they're going to tell you they can't do nothing with it. Once water gets inside of electronics, it's a wrap. I mean, there are certain things you can use to try to help uh, save it. Like I've gotten some controllers, some uh, Pioneer SX2, 3 or whatever, and they got wet, but they brought it to me like right away. So I was able, there's some special chemicals that you could use that, um, you know, it removes the water from the components and then you have to lubricate it. You got to do a heavy lubrication with another chemical that helps to displace the water. But yeah, even that is kind of risky. If you don't catch it, if I don't get it within like a day or two, I can't do nothing with it. You know what I mean? But um, just keep that in mind. So yeah, just uh, passing through real quick. About to put this M50 back together. I got one more to do. And uh, get this stuff back to the customer, man. And once again, uh, just to show you, if you if you want your item repaired properly and your board to look like this, when it's done, send it to Wasi. Wasi will do it right. You understand? Back to, uh, whatchamacallit, factory specs. All right, so uh, I guess until we meet again, until we talk again, until we see each other again, over and out. Bless up. Have a good day.